Hi guys, welcome back. This is the last week of the Every Brits Count Challenge. So, to this week we have done so much stuff. And are still doing it actually. We're finishing up right now as I speak, but I'm not quite sure that I will get that at the end of the video because the day is fading away at me. So, anyway, I have tons of stuff that we can this week. We are going to go over things that we did. We did basil, pasta, salsa, pickles, beets, green beans, um, garlic, um, like a garlic base that I use for the rest of the year. I did an elderberry syrup, which I think I'm gonna like put at the end of the video because it's kind of a step-by-step. -step. So if anyone wanted to um, make that, I will have the elderberry syrup at the end of this video. Um, we also did apple pie filling, apple sauce, um, apple butter. We did um, kale with leeks and then leeks by themselves. And let's see, pickles, more pickles, different types of pickles, and beets. Ooh, we did lots of beets, and we did green beans. Yeah, tons of stuff this week. So, oh, and soup, leek and potato soup. So, I hope you guys come along and see what we made. Oh yes, I almost forgot because I just passed some more bananas. We were gifted about 80 pounds of bananas this week. Is that right? No, 120 pounds of bananas this week, which we froze and put in the dehydrator. So let's go do this. So we ended last week with this abundance here. So I have a bunch of different green uh, beans. Um, some of them are gonna get canned and then some of those we're gonna dry. And then we have two things of cucumbers that are gonna be made into um, bread and butter pickles. And then we have some tomatoes that are gonna be made into salsa. And my salsa actually has either yellow squash or zucchini. I actually prefer yeah. zucchini, um, but we don't have that many zucchini ready at this point. So we'll do probably some of this, maybe like this summer squash. I don't know, I gotta see what I have. Um, and then it also has carrots in it, so I'll probably use carrots and peppers from here in order to make that um, salsa as well. So that is what we're going to be working on the first part of this week. I also started to, we started to take our dry beans and put them into um, this pan right here. So we're going to finish that up and put, get those in a jar. Okay, so the other day we got some, actually my daughter really helped with this. We got all these pickles done and then the salsa done here. And then we took some of the green beans and I am cooking those for supper. Don't they look beautiful? And then I got this box, what I'm working on now, I got this box of green peppers given to us. So I am just chopping these up and putting them into baggies for the freezer. So I just picked all this um, fresh basil, basil from the garden and I'm going to make pesto um, for today's lunch and then I'm going to freeze some of that pesto. So I don't think I shared this the other day. This is the basil pos uh, pesto that I made. I made one for lunch and then two for later. So this is enough to cover four pounds of pasta for my family. So I just am freezing them like this in canning jars and we'll use them over the next I don't know, a month or so. Okay guys, this is what I'm doing today, or we're doing today. Um, we actually are doing quite a few different things. I just did elderberry syrup and made lunch, but we also took these this huge pile of beets and we're going to pull them off and put them in this bowl and then I'm going to make pickled beets. And then we're pulling off the greens and we're gonna throw some of those into the freezer. Okay, I need to go to town, but I'm going to have the kids work on just these beet greens um, while I'm gone. When I come back, I'm going to boil. This is a bowl that's waiting. This is a huge pot full of beets. I'm going to cover these over with water, and I'll cover those over to wa with water um, to cook. So I will cook all of these tonight. Hey guys, just got home, and the beets look great. I uh, know you can't see that well. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you can't see it that well. I'll show you better if I can after. And then I'm just going to show you some things that we got given to us and tell you my plans for that. So this has bananas and onions in it. I'm going to um, change out the bananas and like so the bananas aren't in there with the onions. 
but we're just getting into the house like that. So the onions I'm gonna chop up really fine over this weekend probably and dehydrate those. Um, the bananas need to be attended to right away as well as these bananas. So I have the case on the bottom here and then this up here that needs to be attended to and then the green peppers. So I'm gonna fill the dehydrator with, um, let's see, the bananas and then we will probably chop up the green peppers and then I'll put those in the dehydrator the following day and then I'll try to put some bananas in the freezer as well. Okay guys, I'll just show you where we are at with different things. So these are the beets here that I have canned so far. My daughter is getting some beets still and taking the skins off. And then I have two people working. We're doing like a team effort tonight. Two people working on just dicing up these peppers that we had. And those are going in the freezer like that. And then I'm gonna take the bags out and dehydrate them. And then over here, my daughter has tirelessly been going through this massive pile of greens. And we have these bags so far of all the greens that are gonna go in the freezer like that. And then I'll show you the, oh, this is how many bananas are left. That big box there. We have one in the freezer, freezing, and then we have the dehydrator full. So it can be difficult sometimes when we get a bunch of things at once that have to be taken care of like all at once, but we feel very blessed by having the opportunity to have these things and put them in our pantry. So we all work together and just get them ready and in the pantry. Okay, so all I'm doing is I have my um, beets here. Putting my cantaloupe down. I have my beets here in um, pints and in quarts. And I am just going to put the brine over the top I got my water boiling for my hot water bath. It's starting to boil for my hot water bath. So hopefully that will boil soon. It is, I don't know, I think like eight o'clock now, something like that. So I'm trying to just hurry up to get these ready and washed before I bring the little kids to bed. Alrighty, people are getting their jammies on. I am using paddler rigs because that is what is happening right now so I am going to put my paddler lids on. I wipe some of these and then I'm gonna move them a little bit. So in order to put a tattler lid on you don't put it as tight as you would a normal lid. You pretty much take your ring and very gently okay so that's it. If it starts to turn it's too much. Back it off a little bit. You want it to be loose. You want it really loose. <clears throat> so just finger tight. You don't want to do it too much. That's it. Don't go any further. It feels like it's going to be way too loose. And it's not. It's the only way that it will work. I've made my share of, oops, I tightened it too much a lot of times because it's kind of finicky figuring it out but then once you have you have a bunch of reusable lids which is super awesome so i'm going to do the rest of these and throw them in the canner and the jars are out so you just make sure that once you get them out that you tighten the rings right down and i'm going to do that to all of these and the same with the ones that are in the canner Okay, so we picked a large bowl of green beans and we are going to try to get seven quarts of these to can up. So yesterday, my daughter, I was gone all day and she ended up canning this beautiful um, salsa. And then today, my daughter, my other daughter canned these green beans. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then those are the beets from the other night. Hey guys, so I'm just out in the high tunnel here. Um, it is Thursday. I'm hoping today to get in quite a few canning projects. And she has the lens cap. 
It is chilly this morning. We're definitely feeling like, okay, we need to try to get things in. It is the last day of August and we are heading into September. There's times that I've had to turn the wood stove on in September. I always hope not to have to do that and to do it like the first of October or in October is better for me to turn the wood stove on. So I'm hoping it can be that way this year. Um, I don't know the temperature this morning, but it is chilly. So we're in the high tunnel. I am kind of saddened by what has happened this year in the high tunnel. Things have not produced the way that they normally produce, but our weather has been absolutely crazy. And I've spoken to so many people and they're having the same type of issues in their gardens. And they're asking me if I have more um, produce because they know that we have the big high tunnel and stuff. And I'm like, I just don't, I'm sorry, I just don't. Um, so I'm going to show you what we're doing today. Inside I have some apples that I want to make into pie filling and I'd like to get to those blackberries that we froze and make some blackberry jam. Um, and then let's see, I have a bunch of kale all throughout here that I want to do something with. I have to see the bananas are still in the dehydrator. We have, are on our second round of bananas in the dehydrator. So I see those collards over there and the greens here. All of these, see this is so weird. Look at these. See how tiny those little Brussels sprouts are? We're not gonna get any. So I've been reading up on if we can do anything with the leaves and we might try to do a recipe with one of them and see if it's something that we would eat and then go from there. Some of the beans are finally starting to come on, which normally I'm canning and canning and canning beans right now. This is my one semi-okay Brussels sprout. The rest are horrible. So these are the tomatoes that he just picked. He's gonna bring those in the house. We are going to be, you can bring them in the house. Yeah. Um, we did plant peas along here. I don't know if those are gonna take or not. These cucumbers, I've been saying this for weeks, guys. You know I have, but life gets busy. These cucumbers are all coming down today. That's what she's working on now. This middle section, I planted carrots in. And as you can see, very few carrots came up. There are some there, but we need room for our wood as well. So I'm thinking that that's not gonna happen. And we are clearing out this section because they're growing so slow. We're gonna clear out this section from that fence there, clearing out here to the tomatoes for now. And we'll start putting wood in this section. So she's just grabbing the cabbages that are in this center here. And we just grabbed, he just grabbed the tomatoes off of these to can. And she, we see those couple of tomato plants, let's see. These tomato plants right here, we're gonna pull those as well. So she picked all the green tomatoes right here and we picked the cucumbers off. So this stuff is gonna get made into something. We'll see what that eventually turns out to be. I picked enough corn for us to eat. Um, this corn looks absolutely horrible. Absolutely horrible. I picked from this, which is kind of like the middle, all the way down to the end, anything that was brown. Look how tiny these are. Look how, t look how tiny this is. It's just ridiculous. It's just such a, it's been such a horrible year. We're in a high tunnel, like, this isn't just even regular growing in Maine. So I guess what I'm doing is I picked that section. I'm thinking we'll just be eating corn this year and we won't be canning any of our corn. Um, I don't buy conventional corn because it has GMOs in it. So this will be our fresh um, corn that we're eating for the years. I buy canned corn, non-GMO canned corn, but this will be our only ear corn that we have this year and we'll just eat it over the next couple days. The ones outside are not looking good at all. We'll see, I mean, the plants themselves look great, but the corn is just not looking good at all. So we're gonna collect some um, kale from over there as well, and then I'll take you, I'll get back with you once we get back inside. All right, I'm gonna show you guys what I got for, brought in from, what we brought in from the garden, and then what we still have left that needs to be attended to. So this is jam-packed. I actually shoved them down in there. And then there's this here. There's a thing of tomatoes here. And then the leeks, green tomatoes, and a couple red tomatoes on top here. Some cucumbers, a bunch of cabbage, a handful of corn, that's just gonna be for a meal, and some marigold seeds. 
And then left over here, I need to take care of some of this garlic. There's some tomatoes and carrots. These need to get strung. The basil needs to get planted. And then let's go over here. We have these beans that need to get strung. This is from yesterday. These we're gonna eat. Um, I'm gonna chop those up and eat those probably for supper tonight. And then those beets are going to get situated. Um, those are gonna get situated so we can eat those with the corn and stuff tonight. So this is what we're gonna do. Um, I We are running like, <laughs> this season is just so crazy. Oh, and then I have all those apples that I wanna do into apple pie filling. This season is just a crazy time of year. So um, I think I need to go to town. I don't need to go to town, but there are some things. We're trying to build a pig pen and we need to get some T-posts, some more pallets. Um, I also wanted to take the kids over to pick more blackberries again if they have them and see if a couple more apple trees are ready. So today, some people are gonna be staying home. I think like my two, two of my older girls are gonna stay home. Um, they're gonna make these into pickles for me and then my idea is is we like to eat greens in the morning so she's going to de-rib all of these and wash them and chop them up the kale and then she's also going to chop up all these leeks and then i think i'm going to can the leeks and the kale together and then I'll just be able to use it in the morning time. It'll be quick and easy. I can dump it into the strainer, strain all that stuff out, put in a, I could either put it in a pan, like stir frying it, and add some garlic and salt salt in there and have that to go with like eggs, or I could make it, use it in like, um, uh, I make it, it's called garbage because it doesn't look good, but um, we use um, like, fr we fry up potatoes with onions and kale and, um, well then we'll throw a couple eggs or whatever in there just to like all mix it around and that's like a good hearty breakfast. Um, so we'd be able to use those things for that. So I think we're going to can some of those things, but she's going to prep that for me. So I'm able to can it when I come home and I'm going to get some kids ready to go for the day and leave this mess here. Okay guys, I got back later than expected, but my daughter did get me three big bowls of finely chopped kale. So this, this, and this are all finely chopped kale. And then this is the leeks. And then I took these out of the freezer. These are the skates that we got off of the garlic plants earlier this year. So I'm gonna start filling these jars here. I'm probably going to do 14 jars. I think that's what she has out here. And then we'll decide if I, we might just do 14 tonight and see where we're, we're at after that. Okay, so she is helping. She's putting two spoons of those garlic skates right in there. I'm doing at the same time, I'm just putting about this much of the leeks and then I'll fill the rest of it up with kale. So we got two big, these are gallon jars of bananas and then a little bag extra of bananas like that. So they'll eat these, <clears throat> these ones probably over the next week or so. I'll probably make it into a trail mix. If they do not get eaten after like two weeks, then I would make this in a trail mix and make it into small little bags. And then when we went someplace, then I would bring those with us. So this morning, my daughter's already been up and going and she got <clears throat> this, the dehydrator filled with the peppers. So she's gonna turn that on and then I'll show you. What are you making? Yogurt. She's making yogurt. That has nothing to do with preserving, but that's what she's doing. Um, these are the cans of the kale from last night. So it's the kale and the leeks all together. And then this morning she has one more can. Um, I had prepped them last night and then she finished them this finished doing it this morning and put the kale in there. And then these small jars are just some cans of leeks left over. So. Yeah. Did you get it? What are you making? Um, I don't know. Apple pie filling. Apple pie filling. Hey, this one's a jumpy. 
Yeah. You make an apple pie filling? Yeah. Spin. Let her try it. You can go faster in just a minute. She just wants to try. So these are the peels and cores. These are the apples. Basically, we spin them. Um, my older daughter, she was cutting them into like quarters or six, depending on the size of the apple. And then this will be for the pie filling. And then I'll show you what we did with that stop, stop. after. Yay. Okay, it is mid morning. I am, well, I guess it's closer to lunchtime. I don't know, like 10 30 maybe. Here are the apples that are done. This is the bi uh, pile of scraps. This is the tomatoes and some carrots. She's going to grate these two to go along in our salsa. So there were so many things to can today and not, and people were doing so many different things um, that we decided to start the wood stove. It is September 1st. Right now, honestly, it does not feel super hot in here. I know later today it may feel super hot in here. We'll open the windows and that type of stuff. We also have a door that can shut off to our house. So I have four pots of the um, apples just cooking down on here. And then we decided because we were in the middle of doing that, that we would just set it up for winter. So this is kind of how it will look. We have two by fours all along here. We have lots of kids, so um, each year it looks different, but we always make sure that we have gates and stuff around our wood stove. So if you see me, I want to be cooking on here a lot more this winter. I did the first winter that we got it. I cooked on here all the time. I barely used my stove and it saved a lot on propane and I want to be able to do that. So I brought this, which you've probably seen from the kitchen into here. So I'll be able to cook more in here. I don't know if it was a wise choice to do this yet or not, but it's here. It's done. We're doing it. Okay. So that is all done. It's thickened up like this it's hard to tell i suppose on the camera <clears throat> and i'm putting it into i've already raw packed all these apples that we did you can put them in lemon juice so they're not as um as brown <clears throat> but i'm putting a brown syrup on it so to me it doesn't really matter And then what I'll do is take this straw and shove it in here to kind of debubble it and let some of that get all to the bottom. There we go. So there is one and I will be doing the rest of these. So I did seven of the quarts here and I'm going to throw those in the canner. Don't they look beautiful? My daughter over here has peeled and chopped some potatoes that we had. Now she's went and got some leeks from the garden which we need to preserve. So she is putting the leeks in there. And I started a chicken in this Instapot. I have a chicken and some veggies and stuff in there to make a... Um, to make like a quick stock so I can make the base for this potato and leek soup which we will can. So basically we'll can it like in the stock and then when we go to warm it up then we would add cream in there as we went to warm it up. So that is our plan and what we're doing right now. Oh my daughter's in the dining room and she is working on salsa. Hey guys so I decided that I would like come back here and give you some more of what we're doing because I keep forgetting all the things that I need to get done. You know, it's like that story if you give a mouse cookie. Yeah, that's if you give me a canner and a canning day. So, or a garden that won't, will keep producing. That's wonderful too. Or free trees. I don't know. Anyway, got these two things on. Remember, I have my wood stove on with the apples on top of it to make this applesauce. So now what I'm going to do is take that applesauce, put some in each of these things, and then we will be taking these and putting them into the, um, yeah, into the oven. So, I mean like the wood stove oven. So I'm going to kind of cheat and use the rest of that up. Okay, so what I have here is this big old bowl of applesauce. 
I'm going to fill these just a little more than half. I don't want to go too far with it. That is beautiful. So what we'll be doing is we will be canning a little bit of applesauce, not too much. Um, but this is mainly going to be made into apple butter. Now you could put this in your roaster and cook down like in a roaster if you wanted to. You could also slow cook it on the top of your stove. But today I am going to be doing this with um, my wood stove because it's already on. So remember this, if I know it's hard when I piece everything together because it's so hard to get it all in one because I'm doing so much at one time. Or we as a family are doing so much at one time. Like I'm not doing it all. One child might be doing one thing, you know, whatever. I say child, but some people are young adults. So, my children. So, um, what I'm gonna do is, I had a little bit left over of that apple pie filling. And it has the same type of seasonings that you would use in a, um, in a apple butter. So I'm just gonna start this batch off with so left. I don't want to, I don't want to waste that apple pie filling. You know, if I had some vanilla ice cream, then the kids could have that on top of vanilla ice cream and that would be super yummy, but I don't. And this is what we're going to do. So we're going to do that and I will be back with the other stuff. Okay, so I don't measure, but I use, I like nutmeg. Our family actually likes nutmeg quite a bit. So I'm going to add some nutmeg on top here. I'm going to add a whole lot of cinnamon. Apple butter can be used for so many things. You could top like pancakes with it or a biscuit or this is all spice. I'm going to just do a lot less of that. And then we're going to grab some sugar. I'm going to use brown sugar, but I'm also going to use maple syrup. Actually, maybe I'll just do all brown sugar. No, I'm gonna do it the regular way. So you would use this, um, you could use it in oatmeal or on top of pancakes, on crackers, I don't know. Most of the time, any of my jams or butters or anything like this, we would eat on top of oatmeal because we eat a heck of a lot of oatmeal. Why? Because it's cheap. I'm just being honest, we change things up, for instance, like oatmeal, right? So we eat in the winter time, we probably eat it like three or four times a week. Actually, even in the summertime, we eat it at least twice a week. So we eat a lot of oatmeal because it's cheap and um, we can change it up so many different ways. Like you can put fresh berries in it or you can put slices of apples in it, you can put bananas in it, but then you can also use your jams, your jellies, your um, butters, like this is considered a butter, this is like an apple butter, right? Um, and we also do this like with pumpkin if we have a lot of extra pumpkin. Last year I put a bunch of pumpkin butter up. Um, this year I think it's gonna be more apples than whatever. And most of this is like all the apples that we got were free. So everything that we're doing here is very low cost. So it just adds to the low cost and then it gives us some extra spice to us. So I'm gonna grab the maple syrup. Alrighty, so we are going to double some maple syrup in here. I just like that maple leaf flavor. You could add more maple syrup and less brown sugar, um, but we use this as a sweetener and this is the way that we like to do it. So I'm gonna stir it in a little bit and then I'll put it in the oven and then I'll just keep stirring it probably, I don't really know, it's probably like every time or every other time that we would stoke the fire, then we would just stir it until it came into a beautiful, beautiful, um, I don't know, just like this, it gets thicker, and yeah, it's just super, super yummy. So, that is that. Let me show you a little closer, let's see. Okay, so she's gonna do blackberry jam with any um, of the berries. I always do equal parts of sugar and berries and I don't use pectin. So I have, I think she has eight, an eight 
or maybe it's four and four. I can't remember. It looks like eight and eight. And then we do a little bit of um, lemon juice and then she will cook this down and then we'll do the plate test. Okay guys, so I got a bunch of garlic here. What I'm going to do is take my um, chopper. I always call it a chopper. What is this, food processor? And put some garlic in there. And then I'm going to bring it over and chop that up. So I'm just gonna put about that much in there. And I'll be back. So I have them chopped up roughly like this. And I am going to add a bunch of um, olive oil. So about a quart of olive oil to this and I will mix it up again. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's kind of watery, um, but it's like all, I don't know if you can see in there or not. Okay, that is how it is. Like this, and I'm going to, I'm going to pour this into these pints. And then these are gonna go in the freezer and I will use this just like you would buy a jar of like chopped up garlic. This is exactly how it will be used. So I will throw these in the freezer and use them like that. It's just a convenient way for us to have our homegrown gar garlic ready to just like scoop and use in a recipe. So here are the dehydrated peppers and they're just like this. So you can throw this into soups or stews or anything like that and it'll rehydrate or you can rehydrate and use them for like a stir fry or something. So she's just gonna put those in a jar. So here's the apple butter, it's all done and we're gonna can it up now. All the way full or just halfway? All the way full. Yeah. Do you like this kind? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't try it. You don't remember? <laughs> I don't know if I tried it yet, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think that you tried it this year. That's good, Mommy. Yep, that's good. So my daughter was actually making, this one's a lot lower. My daughter was making some cookies that call for, um, that use this in the cookies. They're apple, they're oatmeal raisin cookies, but they use either pumpkin butter or apple butter in the recipe. So it uses that up and they're also gluten free. So we really like that recipe. It comes out really good. I might share that at some point. I don't know when, I'm finishing canning. So we got some elderberries this morning. I got these um, like two days ago. So I'm just gonna put these in my pot and I'm gonna try to get, I don't know, probably about two cups of elderberries here and then what I'm going to do is take about six cups of water and we will put that on the stove for about 35 minutes and then I'll add um, a couple things after that. So I'm just going to take the bowl of these and put them into the pot and then I'll be back. Okay so we have the elderberries and then we have the water and then my assistant is going to put <laughs> Cinnamon. cinnamon sticks in it. So she Drop has two it. cinnamon sticks, put it in the pan, and we're gonna go turn it on the stove. What is it? Elderberry syrup. Okay, so now I'm just gonna strain this. Okay, so now all I'm doing is taking that liquid and I'm gonna put this back into my pan and then I'm gonna add, it usually goes about a third of what you had. So I had six cups in here of liquid and now it's down to two cups. So then I'm gonna add like three quarters of a cup of honey. So I have this organic honey here. Let's see if you guys can see it and it is crystallized a little bit on top here, um, but that will be fine because it'll all melt in together anyway. I have some local honey as well. I'm just trying to use up this honey first, 
And then I have a five gallon pail, if you guys remember, of that honey. Um, but I had brought this honey down from the cabin and just wanted to use it up first. So I'm basically going to put, I think that's about three quarters cup. I'm going to melt this in just till it melts. I don't want to cook it because I want the properties of the honey. But just until this melts over very low heat. Um, and then we'll see how it is after that. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of lemon juice in here. And then I'm going to pour it into back into this um, jar. Let's move this over for you. We're going to pour this back in. And I'm not worried about it too much. I am going to be taking this because my lovely little cold is not deciding to go away. I don't know if it's cold or al allergies. My... Um, my fever has never come back, but my snuffies keep going. So what I would do is I would take like, you know those little medicine cups, they're like this big. Um, I think they're, what are they, like 20 or 30 milligrams, something like that. I'll show you one. My daughter found one. So we get these little like shot glass style like this. So you could like pour it in here and then take it like that, like a shot. Or um, you could take this amount and then like put it over some iced water and just drink it down like that. So for me, honestly, I am just gonna work on this and I'll probably include some in some of the kids' drinks over the next few weeks because September usually is a hard hitter for colds and flus and all that type of stuff around here. Kids are going back to school, not my kids, but kids are going back to school and there's lots of germs surrounding around everywhere. So let's build up our immune systems. Hi hey guys. Okay, I got zoomed way in. Hi hey guys, that's better. Okay, so I am in the middle of doing this um, leek and potato soup. I will show you that because that is a new one. And then we're gonna finish up canning the um, salsa and then canning up what else are we doing? Oh, all that applesauce we still need to do. So we need to still do those two things, but I need to start editing. So I do not know because I have to do something tomorrow, which is Saturday, which is usually the day. I try to upload things Friday night to go for Saturday so I can upload it to YouTube on Saturday morning. But I need to leave tomorrow morning and I'm not quite sure that's gonna work. So I'm gonna show you what we have going on here and I'm hoping to try to edit. So the title of this video will probably have what we can. I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna be able to show you all the applesauce that we can um, in this video, but you guys saw last week that we did a bunch of applesauce. Um, I'm just not quite sure. I still have those on the wood stove and they are, whoop, they are working on that there. Um, now so I'm not sure that I'll show you all of the applesauce that we can but I'll let you know what we did so what I'm doing right here or all the salsa yes we have salsa in here which is almost done to can up but I used up all my jars so I need to grab more jars and wash those um so what I did here was the leeks right here is about I don't know maybe a third of the jar with leeks but they get all smushed down because the potatoes are heavier. So I have seven quarts here, and I will have seven more quarts. My daughter cut me up another, I see it over there. I was grabbing some meals out of the freezer because I knew that it was gonna be a busy couple days and making a meal plan for the next couple days. Um, so she has those leeks for me, and those are the other three jars and the potatoes. So grand total on this, we will have 14 jars of this um, potato and leek soup. So all this is is leeks, with potatoes, I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of salt, uh, a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper in each one. And then I took a chicken. Yes, you may help in just a minute. I took a chicken and I put it in the Instapot to make some quick broth um, like this. And I'm going to pour that over the top of these. And then I'm gonna take the chicken off of this. I'll do this probably twice so I have enough broth. Um, I'll take the chicken off of this and maybe make like a chicken salad over the next couple days. Alrighty, so that is about it. I have lots to do around here. 
but I just wanted to share where we were at and I'm not quite sure that I'm gonna be able to show you any more. I'm gonna try at the end to maybe get everything all lined up together and then show you that, but I'm not sure that that's gonna happen, so excuse me if it doesn't. And I hope y'all have a blessed week.